want you to hit me as hard as you can. Lance Felchuk here for Air on the Head's The F***ing Black Sheep, where we take a look at the opposing opinion of the genre's most divisive films. Let's talk about zombies, a subgenre that jumped from the whore hounds into the masses. Look no further than games like Left 4 Dead and Resident Evil. On TV, we have The Walking Dead, which has been around for eight seasons. Eight. With spin-offs, sequels, and prequels, it shows no signs of slowing down. On the film side, we've had current hits like Train to Busan, Girl with All the Gifts, and the underrated Schwarzenegger outing, Maggie. Nowadays, they are firmly in the forefront of the mainstream public consciousness. Horror has always worked best when looking inward, and the zombie subgenre has been instrumental in representing these fears. That brings me to one of my favorite films in the Black Sheep of the Romero Trilogy, Day of the Dead. Now, you're probably saying, how in the hell is Day considered the black sheep? Romero is responsible for creating the modern zombie and setting up the rules that we still live by today. 20 years after Day of the Dead, he returned to his creation with the follow-up, Land of the Dead. The master had finally come home, and what we got was the clearest sign that the times have changed. The undercurrent of political commentary was now blunt and over the top. The charm and tension was missing, while its only saving grace was Dennis Pap's Blue Ribbon Hopper. It's true what they say, you can never go home. He then traversed on with Diary of the Dead and made the gimmicky found footage angle seem dated, which is impressive because Paranormal Activity debuted the same year. Survival of the Dead came off like a low-budget copycat, a caricature of a Romero film, and was a soulless clone of what has come before. You see, these can't be considered the black sheep because what they offer is obviously inferior. There isn't a hidden gem or a misunderstood entry. What all these amount to are raw and honest reality checks that one must know when to bow out and let your creation go. Day of the Dead was the brilliant cap-off in a glorious trilogy. Night of the Living Dead was a classic black and white film with little gore and plenty to say about its chaotic times. Dawn perfected this by going to color, growing the zombie herd, and upping the gore. It used the shopping mall setting to explore the dead's behavior, mankind's selfishness, and our own consumer culture. They were both amazing films which set up the last chapter, and bookending the trilogy was his magnum opus, Day of the Dead. When boiled down, Dawn of the Dead had hope, but not day. Hope belongs in Sewataneo, sanding a boat. Not here. Part 3 takes place far enough into the zombie apocalypse that society has crumbled and the human race is nearing extinction. This bleak tone is not only a natural progression, but the culmination of the previous two films. In an underground missile silo, we have a small group of scientists and military personnel who have been tasked with finding a remedy to the outbreak. They are led by the hero scientist, Sarah Bowman, and the military captain, Henry Rhodes. We enter the story at the turning point in their force community. The former commander has died. With Rhodes moving up in rank, he has streamlined this into a power grab. Since when did this become a military operation? Since I took over. There is never a moment in this group where we feel a common goal that has long since died. In one of the first meetings, Captain Rhodes pulls a gun on Sarah and threatens death if she doesn't obey an order to sit down. Sit down or so help me God, I'll have you shot. You see this? This would be considered the light-hearted part of the film. Day of the Dead is all about the collapse. You may be tricked into thinking there is promise or a better way forward, but Day's strength is crushing one's optimism. With time running out, supplies and food diminishing, Dr. Frankenstein, the mad but brilliant scientist, is actually making progress, focusing on behavior over causation. With a cure being unlikely, he starts to develop ways that they may domesticate the zombies. This is represented by Bub. We get to learn more about the dead's familiar behavior, which was touched on in Dawn, and get a sense that there is a little bit of humanity somewhere left in these monsters. This is a tricky thing to do, and is handled with respect and nuance by Bub's actor, Sherman Howard. Bub could have come off more clumsy or forced, but you grow to feel for him. There is a warmth and sensitivity to this puppy-like zombie. This is where Land of the Dead failed, with Big Daddy vocally communicating with the dead. <laughs> Ah! 
this never works and just diminishes any threat or compassion the film is built towards. This progress means little to nothing as Dr. Frankenstein is killed for using the dead military personnel as zombie treats for Bub. Watching Captain Rhodes go insane over the 90 minute runtime is great. He is a great A asshole and brings a lot of passion to the film. He is definitely an 80s villain with his in your face over the top attitude. What the fuck is wrong with you people? They're dead! I won't have you going around doping up any of my men without orders from me, is that clear? This is a fucking war! All their fucking guns. I don't want them to do anything but drop over. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time. There's always been a critique about Day having no likable characters, but that's not true. It's just that everyone is miserable and stressed as we are witnessing end times. The only people remotely calm here are the Jamaican helicopter pilot and the Irish Mr. Bean. Seriously. Every dead film mirrors its time, and this has Reagan era politics written all over it. It's deeply suspicious of the amount of unchecked power in the military. If the structures of society crumbled, would the military be on our side? It shows Rhodes and his crew deeply suspicious of science and threatened by their advancements. This is a world where the human spirit has faded, where sexual aggression and hints of rape constantly follow our lead. Give some of the rest of us a shot at some loving. One where brute force is not only threatened, but seen as a reasonable method in communication. Do we come together or are we driven apart? Are the monsters outside truly worse than the ones in here? With a slightly higher budget, Tom Savini was able to realize the zombie to what we've all come to know and love. And I'll just say it now, I've never cared for the look of the zombies in Dawn. What may have worked well, backlit in the shadows in Night of the Living Dead, looked pretty pedestrian in Dawn. The painted green and blue faces never derived any fear or shock, and have always looked like extras painted up. With the higher budget on day, came better effects, and Savini doesn't disappoint. The zombies actually look like the dead have risen, and you get to see more decay and deformities as well. It's a perfect match for a perfect film. Night and Dawn of the Dead transcended horror and made George Romero a legend. Those films have earned their rightful spot in cinema history, but Day of the Dead will always be the best. From its cynical point of view to the darker nature of humanity, Romero saved his most honest and brutal view of the human race for his ending chapter. It's one's lack of empathy and lack of communication that puts the final punctuation on the end of the world.